Good afternoon, I'm Dan Godwin. We begin with breaking news this afternoon. The first Ebola patient diagnosed in the United States and being treated here in North Texas has died. Thomas Eric Duncan was in isolation at Texas Health Presbyterian Hospital in Northeast Dallas for 10 days. He was pronounced dead at 7.51 this morning. Fox 4, Sean Rabb is at the hospital with the very latest, Sean. Right, good afternoon to you, Dan. As you mentioned, Thomas Eric Duncan died at 7.51 this morning. Um, you know, yesterday we heard that he was yet critical, but perhaps there was a slight improvement, although we knew that he was still on kidney dialysis and that he also had a lung infection. And in the end, uh, this insidious virus, this disease was too much for the 42-year-old man who fought here at Presbyterian to overcome. Let me take you back, if you will. On September 20th, um, Duncan arrived here in Dallas from Liberia. He was hoping to reconcile uh, with longtime uh, girlfriend, Louise Tro, uh, the, the mother of his son, Eric Duncan. Duncan Jr. Uh, several days later, he began to be ill. He came here to Presbyterian, you recall, on or about the 26th of September with fever and abdominal pains, told the folks here that he had traveled from Africa but was sent home with antibiotics. On the 28th, he was brought back here by Dallas paramedics. The 29th, uh, Presbyterian sent out uh, notice that there could possibly be an Ebola patient. And by the 30th, we knew that was so. He has been here fighting for his life. Since then, he lost his life this morning. He was uh, taking an experimental drug that only started on Saturday, about 2.14 in the afternoon. Uh, that drug had never been uh, tested on uh, humans before in any shape, form, or fashion. Uh, and again, Thomas Duncan died. Now, you'll recall that he was here again to see the mother of his child, Louise Tro. Uh, we have video from her last Friday. Uh, Louise Tro and others who had been in the apartment at the Ivy Apartments were leaving uh, with Judge Clay Jenkins to go to uh, an undisclosed closed location. She has uh, sent out a statement this morning, kind of lengthy. Let me read it to you. This morning we received word that Eric passed away. His suffering is over. She writes, my family uh, is in deep sadness and grief, but we leave him in the hands of God. Our deepest sympathies go out to his father and family in Liberia and here in America. He was a wonderful man who showed compassion toward all. She goes on to thank the Dallas community, uh, the church, the Liberian community, and in particular, she writes, County Judge Jenkins, Mayor Rawlings, her Pastor George Mason at Wilshire Baptist Church, uh, and some others, including Stanley Gay and Alvin Bush from the Liberian community. And uh, she says uh, that she trusts now a thorough examination will take place regarding all aspects of his care. She's now dealing with the sorrow and anger that uh, she was not able, his son was not able to see him before he died. This will take some time, she writes, but in the end, I believe a merciful, I believe in rather, a merciful God. Now, uh, there are strict guidelines by the Centers for Disease Control uh, that must be followed in handling the, the corpse of someone who's died from Ebola. Uh, first, the body must be wrapped in plastic, and then it's placed in a zippered bag, and then placed in a second zippered bag. Uh, those who handle it must then remove all of their materials uh, and wash and disinfect thoroughly. It's important because this virus is able to live even after death in bodily fluids. That's the kind of virus this Ebola virus uh, is. Uh, the body is then supposed to be placed in an airtight airtight casket for transport. Um, but we believe that uh, conversations are taking place now through Dr. David Lakey, the state health commissioner, for the remains of, of Thomas Duncan to be um, uh, cremated. And, and it's so it may even be that that's already taken place. Um, you'd have to find a mortuary locally willing to take that body, and if not, then the state would have to contract with someone to come in and follow those strict CDC guidelines. But again, we believe that there are conversations with the family taking place now, uh, perhaps already done so, that will allow for Thomas Eric Duncan to be cremated if that has not already taken place. Um, folks that we have spoken to here today uh, are sad. Employees that we visited with, we went in the hospital and talked to a few people, and, and there was a lot of hope here, Dan, that somehow uh, he would be able to turn the corner and, and survive being the first uh, Ebola patient diagnosed in the United States right here in Dallas. Uh, not the kind of, of ending that certainly the mayor and Judge Clay Jenkins and certainly the staff here at Presbyterian wanted, anyone wanted. Uh, sadly, this is not the footnote to history that Dallas wanted regarding Thomas Eric Duncan and Ebola here at 
Texas Health Resources Presbyterian. That's the story for now from here. Dan, back to you. Yeah, there certainly were a lot of prayers being said for Mr. Duncan. Uh, Sean, in your time there at the hospital, have you heard, will there be a news conference perhaps this afternoon with maybe some of the physicians who were treating Mr. Duncan? What we understand at this moment is that either neither Texas Health Resources Presbyterian or Judge Clay Jenkins planning any type of news conference. That's what we understand now. That could change, but, but at the moment, I think all are, are wrapped in their grief and, and, and mourning. Hope has been dashed. And so I think they're dealing with that and, and not ready yet to face the media. It may be possible that we'll hear from Judge Jenkins in one-on-one in -on -one settings or the mayor, but I, I, uh, I don't believe there will be, at this moment anyway, a set news conference. All right, Sean Rabb reporting live for us this afternoon at Texas Health Presbyterian Northeast Dallas. Thanks very much. Well, there have been a flood of condolences being offered to the family through statements. Dallas County Judge Clay Jenkins says, My thoughts are with the family and friends of Mr. Duncan, especially his fiancée Louise, their son Karsaya, and all of those who loved him. Also, the state health commissioner this morning in part said, This past week has been an enormous test of our health system. But for one family, it has been far more personal. Today, they lost a dear member of their family. Thomas Duncan was in contact with students from five DISD schools. The district released this statement. Today, our thoughts are with our students who knew Mr. Duncan. The district will make counseling services available to students and staff. Also this morning, Dallas Mayor Mike Rawlings delivered a statement about Duncan's death at the city council meeting. This hurts deeply, and we were hoping this was not going to happen. But on behalf of the city of Dallas, uh, I extend our deepest sympathies to the families and the friends of Mr. Duncan. I remain confident in the abilities of our health care professionals and the medical advances in the United States, and reassure you we will stop the Ebola virus in its tracks from spreading into our community. I want to reinforce the public that this was an isolated incident of the Ebola virus contracted by the individual while residing in another country where the virus has become an epidemic. This is sad news for all involved. We will continue to do everything possible with our partners at the county to protect our public health and all of the city of Dallas. The news broke during the Dallas City Council meeting this morning. The mayor said that although Mr. Duncan came from another country, he was adopted into the Dallas community. Well, Kent Brantley, a doctor with ties to Fort Worth, donated blood to the cameraman who just returned from West Africa with Ebola. You'll remember Brantley was the first American flown back to the U.S. for treatment of Ebola this summer. Brantley's blood type matches the freelance photographer's blood. He will receive the transfusion today at the Nebraska Medical Center. Such transfusions are believed to help Ebola patients because a survivor's blood contains antibodies to fight the disease. Passengers at five U.S. airports who are coming from West Africa will face additional screening measures. They'll be given questionnaires and have their temperatures taken when they arrive. A federal official says the extra security measures will be carried out quickly, possibly as soon as this weekend. The airports are JFK in New York, Dullis Airport in Washington, D.C., Chicago's O'Hare, Hartsfield in Atlanta, and Newark Airport in New Jersey. The Homeland Security Department has also ordered agents at all airports and other ports of entry to observe everyone coming into the United States for potential signs of Ebola infection. The Obama administration has been talking about what it can do effectively to detect arriving passengers who may be carrying the disease. The World Bank today says the economic impact of the Ebola epidemic could be catastrophic for the West African economy. That's if the disease spreads to neighboring countries outside Guinea, Liberia, and Sierra Leone. The epidemic could cost that region more than $32 billion by the end of next year. The World Bank is a branch of the UN that funds third world development. The World Health Organization estimates Ebola has killed more than 3,400 people in West Africa and infected at least twice that many. 
Again, to recap, Thomas Eric Duncan, the first patient diagnosed with Ebola in the United States, has died. We are working to get additional information from Presbyterian Hospital and the CDC about what is next with the Ebola investigation. We will have updates throughout the day on MyFoxDFW.com.